And I'm going to show you how I make my stickers. I actually use two programs. This is Adobe Illustrator, and then I also use Silhouette Studio. Um, I just know this program really well, so um, I'm going to show you how I do it. So I have the sticker pack. I just all, they're all PNGs, and I just brought them in and uh, made them all small. They're just stacked on top of each other. But I pulled one off, and I made it three inches. And I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it over here. Um, this is just a smaller artboard. It's easier to work with. So I have a printer that prints white. So when I print this on clear, in order for it to stand out on a darker surface, I have to print a white layer behind it, but I have to create that. So I'll show you how I do that first. So I just go to, well, I have to select it, and then I go to the offset tool and I click internal offset and I click it to point zero one and then I hit apply. Now they're all these different pieces so I'm going to group them and I'm also going to turn the line color off and then I'm going to fill it with this gray um, just so I know that that's the white layer and then I'm going to put it in the back so object arrange send to back and then you don't even see it anymore. So then I'm going to select the image again and I'm going to create the contour cut line, which will be the shape of the sticker. So I go back to my offset tool and I create an outside offset. But I don't want it to be 0.01 because that was just slightly inside. Um, I'm going to make it 0.1 and it makes it bigger. I, I like a big um, border around it. I know everybody's different. Some people try to make it really close, but honestly, it is very hard to get that line exact when it cuts. So, uh, Silhouette just did an update and it, it now requires you to add a weight to your line. So when you import it into Adobe Illustrator to apply the cut line swatch, um, it won't see it unless it used to just be zero and it would, it read it, but now you have to actually assign the line to 0.25. So that gives it a weight. And um, then I'm going to go to object, release the compound path, and I'm going to hit shift and click the outside line because that deselects it. And then I will get rid of all these little pieces on the inside. And then I go around and I make sure that there isn't any area where I think the cutter will give me trouble and all this looks pretty good. Usually when you make the line closer there's parts where the blade will kind of snag the vinyl when it's cutting it. So now there's three pieces. There's the line, the art, and the white base. So I'm going to put all those back and I'm going to select them all and hit group. And these are all, I'm making a pack. So these are all going to be three inches, either tall or wide, whichever the longest side is. And then I get this as close to the edge of the artboard as possible. Um, I don't spend like way too much time, but um, I'm going to make it pretty close because um, you have a big, huge bounding box if, if, it's, if it's a small image on a big artboard, then you've got the big bounding box around it, and then you have to crop it in your RIP software. I use VersaWorks, and that's pretty annoying to have to do that all the time, so I just make sure it's ready to go. So then I go File, Save As, Hard Drive, and the first thing I do is I save it as the Studio 3 so I can come back and make any changes if I want. So this is going to be number 4 and I leave it at the Studio so I can open it in here and edit it if I want. But in order to get it into Illustrator I have to save it as a PDF. So I always save two copies. And then I come over here in Adobe Illustrator and I'm going to open that one I just created. I hit command 
plus no command zero to get it. <gasps> no, what happened here? It didn't. It didn't save that. I'm gonna trash this. I don't know why. Why did this line? Why did the line? It's back to zero. I wonder why it didn't save. Okay. Now let's do it again. File, save as hard drive. Now I'm going to save it as the studio. Replace it. And I'm going to see it now. At least it showed you what happened. If that thickness wasn't set to 0.25. I mean, you can set it to anything. It just has to be set at something. I just set it at 0.25 because that's what it needs to be in here. Now we open it. Number four. And there we go, there's the line. Command zero brings it up close. So now I select the art object, flatten transparency. Make sure this is unchecked. Every time you open it for the first time, that's checked. You have to uncheck it, but then if you have it open and you're doing multiples, it, it stays unchecked. So okay. And then I move it to the back. And I expose the gray. Now I click on it and it doesn't necessarily, add. instead of having to hit the shift and click all those pieces, here's a trick. Select, same, fill color, and it selects all of them. So here I click on fill, and then this is my Roland VersaWorks swatch library. I want it to be, I, so I assign the RDG white, that way my printer knows to print that white. And it's gray. That's why I do it gray in the Silhouette Studio. So you can see it's just slightly smaller than the actual artwork, just in case it it's off. And we all know these these printers they, and cutters they are usually a little off, so you have to compensate for it. So now I'm going to select the line, and over here select the stroke and then I'm going to assign it the perf cut contour which is also gray um, that way my cutter like my printer won't print it but when it goes to cut that's where my cutter will cut so now I save it as the PDF just right on top of the original one I'm gonna replace it and then I hit save and then I'm ready to go I will um, well, I'm on a on a Mac computer, and my printers have a PC hooked up to it. So I usually just download it or upload it to a cloud service. And then when I go to my shop, I open up that website and download this image onto that computer and import it into VersaWorks, or I send it to print and cut. But this is how I do it from Silhouette Studio to Adobe Illustrator to VersaWorks. I know a lot of other um, crafters upgraded and, and bought Rollins and they still use their Silhouette. So I was just showing you an easy way to do it. This is how I do it. I print stickers every single day. So I got, got it down to a science. So maybe I'll show a video of me pulling this into VersaWorks and showing you how I do it from there and printing and cut and laminating and cutting. So I hope this helps somebody. If you have any questions, just let me know. Have a great day. Bye.